Hi everyone. For the first exercise, we're going to look at a parametric bench model. And I have compiled some images from Google. As you can see, parametric benches are basically parametric workflows that control planarized elements. And you can achieve a lot of variations uh, using uh, different inputs and parameters. And there are a lot more complex options online, but we'll be looking at a simpler exercise uh, in this case, something uh, like this basically. So I'm going to switch to Rhino and uh, I have already made the script and I'm just going to show you what the end result of today's tutorial is going to be like. So this is the parametric model that we have, which could be changed. And this is one of the instances that I have baked. And as you can see, we can control uh, the topology or the sections of this parametric bench using different types of inputs. So in our case, we'll be using graphs and we'll be building the sections uh, using points and then extracting uh, contours or sections of the parametric bench model. Now, before I get to this exercise, uh, I'm actually going to show you if you want to model something like this uh, in Rhino, um, basically we can, uh, we can look at some of the fundamental concepts behind how to model something like this. So I'm going to first create a kind of a profile curve. Let's say this is going to be the spine of my parametric bench. And these are going to be the sections of uh, my parametric bench. So I'm just going to show you how we can actually model the geometry first in Rhino if we were to not use Grasshopper. Um, now we need to introduce something uh, that is called as the construction plane or the C plane for short. Uh, construction planes are basically planes uh, on which we can model geometry. Uh, by default, the world construction plane is set to this XYZ uh, plane. So every time I generate some geometry, you can see that it's being placed on the construction plane. And one advantage of the construction planes is basically we can orient them or um, put them in different uh, ways in 3D geometry so that we can model more complex cases. So if I want to have perpendicular sections or profiles on a NURPS uh, curve in this way, uh, I can basically set some construction planes at certain locations and uh, move my profiles to those construction planes. Now one way to do that would be to use uh, set C plane perpendicular to curve command. Now when I enable that, you can see that's asking me for a curve to orient the C plane. I'm going to choose a C plane and I can move the construction plane that is always uh, perpendicular to the, um, to the curve. And it's also showing me the X and Y directions. So I'm going to first place it at the beginning of the curve and you can see that um, the construction plane is now uh, removed from the world place, the world construction plane, and it's uh, now being placed onto the curve and I'm going to orient this profile onto the curve so that we can uh, basically start placing the sections. Now to do that, I can do orient three point command and orient three point basically lets you select an object and select three points of references on that object. So I'm going to turn off my project option in the object snap options and choose three points. And these can be on the curve itself. I'm going to choose the origin of this profile, uh, an endpoint and another point. And then it's asking me for the target points. So the target points should go in the same orientation. So you can see that I made kind of an L shape on the, uh, on the profile. And now the target points, uh, I'm going to turn on the project on and the project will always snap to the construction plane. Um, and then I'm going to choose or origin, hold shift, go to the right direction and then go somewhere here and then you can see that I placed my profile, the per first profile onto the curve. I'm going to do the same thing to the second uh, section. I'm going to choose set C plane perpendicular. I'm going to move the plane onto the curve itself. Uh, then I'm going to use again orient three point, choose the geometry, turn off project point one, point two, point three of reference. Now for the target points, enable project so that we can snap to the C plane, point one, point two, and point three. And you can see that this geometry is now placed perpendicular to the, um, to the curve onto the construction plane. And 
for the last one, I'm going to move to the end of the curve and orient three point, select the geometry, turn off project, point one, point two, point three. And for the targets, enable project, point one, point two, and point three. After that is done, uh, what I'm going to do is basically a sweep. So I type in sweep one, select the rail, first curve, uh, first profile, second profile, and third profile. And this would be basically the form that, uh, let's say, I want to achieve, right? So uh, you can see that some of the basics that I've covered here is basically we can uh, use the curve as a spine on which we can produce some profiles and we can do sweeps. And then I can basically extract uh, some sections out of this geometry. So to extract the sections, I can basically do something simple as the contour command. So when I do contour, I can um, move from one uh, point to another direction and I can specify some distance. Let's say that distance is going to be, in our case, five centimeters and I can extract the profiles of the geometry, right? So these are, if I, so these are now um, the profiles of my parametric bench. And if I turn each of them into surfaces, that's how we can construct uh, a bench like this basically. And we will also need some metal rods that connect these pieces. Um, now, uh, of course, we can generate a simple model like this, but the problem is it's not parametric. So if I wanted to change any of these profiles, I have to go back and remodel a new profile and place it onto the curve itself. So basically the parametric workflow is not there and the variations will be limited. So we can only model one instance. And that's why we are going to uh, use this uh, logic of using a spine and profiles and uh, making surfaces and sections, but we will approach the problem in a more parametric manner. So uh, to begin with the exercise, I'm going to turn my construction plane to the world top so that we can first work on our profile here. And then I'm going to use a spine on which we will uh, place this profile. And then I'm going to show you how we can extract the um, the, the sur surfaces or the um, each uh, section from that model. So I'm going to go to Grasshopper now and I'm going to open a new file. And I'm going to start building this uh, hypothetical section in uh, Grasshopper. So to begin with, um, what I want to do is basically parameterize some of the components of this parametric bench. Um, and you can see that if I turn the control points on, we have two, four, six, eight, ten points. So I need ten points to con construct this profile. But what I want to do is construct the Z value of this section and the Z value of this section so that we can have some interesting formal properties for the bench that we're going to model. And the other points are going to be fixed. So these six points are going to be fixed, whereas these four points are going to move in one direction. So let's start uh, building this. Uh, for placing the points, I'm going to first use a plane and the plane I'm going to use is the XY plane. So if you type in, if you double click and type in XY plane, you can place a construction plane and the XY plane is located basically under the vector tab. And then I'm going to use something called point oriented. Now the advantage of point oriented is basically it takes in a construction plane and a U and V value. It's basically uh, feeding in X, Y values that are oriented to a plane. So if I use the X, Y plane as my base plane, I can feed in some U and V values to find uh, some similar points uh, for, the, uh, for the profile that I want to make. And for the U and V, I'm going to define an interval minus 100 to 100. You can define a number sliders uh, like this. If you double click on your screen, type in minus 100 dot dot 100. That will give you a number slider with an interval. And I'm going to use this and put to you. And actually the first one is going to have zero, zero. So if I type in zero, zero, that will be the first uh, point for my um, construction plane, uh, for, for my profile. And for the second point, I'm going to make a copy and paste this point-oriented command. 
um, make a copy of the number slider, connect to you and move in the positive direction. I'm going to stop somewhere around 65 and that will be the location for my second point. For the third point, I'm going to move a little bit, a little bit more in the X direction, which is going to be, let's say 80. And then for the V direction, I'm going to move up uh, to let's say 100, right? So that's going to be the third point. For the fourth point, I'm going to keep moving in the U direction and set it to 100. So I'm not changing this interval as much. I'm just trying to get a similar shape to the section that I've just sketched out. After the fourth point, the fifth one is going to be located at the same uh, U value, but the V value is going to be lower. So we're going to go all the way down to minus, uh, let's say minus 50. I'm going to make a copy paste. Uh, the V value is going to be the same. I'm going to move in this direction and make this 75. Make another copy. And this time I'm going to move a bit more, let's say to 60, and then we're going to have minus 20 uh, that is close to this shape. Another copy paste. Uh, minus 20 is going to stay. I'm going to keep moving in this direction. And let's say this time we're going to stop at 30. And for the last points, I'm going to move a bit more. Uh, let's say this is going to be 20, and this is going to be at minus uh, 50. For the last point, I'm going to stay at minus 50, and I'm going to make this at zero. So if I now hide the profile I have, these are the points that uh, I'm going to use for the profile that I have. And uh, one thing I want to mention is that these six points that I shown you are going to be fixed, whereas these four points are going to be uh, are going to be flexible. So these two points, I want to control the V value for these. So I'm going to connect the same uh, parameter for the V value, delete this one, and I'm going to simply um, move this out so that we can replace it with some other parameter. I'm going to uh, move these out as well. And for these two, let's find those points. Those points are going to be here. I'm going to be controlling the minus 50 um, parameter and I'm going to make it sim single as well. And I'm going to move it out. So these two, I'm going to be controlling parametrically. So you can see that if I move this parameter, those two points move up and down. And if I move this, these two points move up and down, right? But the other points and the other coordinates are going to be fixed. Um, now let's turn this into a profile. To do that, I'm going to use the Vive command. And what I want to do is put these points in an order and uh, put the information together. So uh, I have 10 points, so I need 10 channels here. I'm going to add 10 more channels. And the way V works is basically it uh, gets multiple streams of data and it puts them into clusters. And um, I need to connect these points in order. Uh, to all these streams. And don't forget that we are going to do this a bunch of times to uh, multiple sections when we do the primitive bench. So when I connect these, um, they have to be woven together. Uh, but now we are only getting the two, first two points because uh, our pattern of weaving is not set. So if you right click to the P parameter, manage integer collection, here we need to define what kind of streams are going to be woven together. So I have to basically type in all the uh, values, all the channels. So five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now what this will do is it will basically get single data from all these streams and put them in a cluster. And to do that, I also need to graft these locations. So if you right click here and graft all of these channels, what will happen is that at the end of the result, at the W, we will have a single list containing 10 points. And if you go to W, you see that there's a single list with 10 points. And if I do a polyline, and uh, this is basically now connecting these points, and I can simply add a Boolean toggle here to make the polyline closed so that this would be now uh, my shape. And if I move any of these parameters, that shape would also change. 
so that this will be a dynamic uh, shape. Now, if you did uh, all this, uh, all this part, uh, let's move on to actually doing this a bunch of times. So what I'm going to do is uh, do this operation on a curve. And for this curve, uh, for this spine, I basically modeled uh, a curve like this. And I'm going to input that into Grasshopper. So I'm moving this around and I'll come back here and to the beginning of my script, I type in curve to input this Rhino geometry, right click to the curve, set one curve and choose the curve itself. And then I'm going to do perpendicular frames. And I'm going to set a bunch of uh, perpendicular frames. So these are basically, uh, if you remember how I modeled the parametric bench, we can control the number of uh, parametric uh, frames, uh, perpendicular frames on a curve. So I'm going to set 20 to begin with. So I'm going to have 20 uh, frames. And by default, we were using XY plane to construct our profile, but now I want to switch to these perpendicular frames. So I need to connect each plane uh, to this frame. So I'm going to replace the P parameter of each point onto the plane. Let's see if I'm missing any. I have actually um, made it work. So you can see that my spine is here. So that became the origin of my profile. And each profile is now oriented according to uh, that origin placement. And I have at the end, I have 21 uh, profiles. And what we can do is a simple sweep to see what's going to happen. So if I get the curve as my rail, and for my sections, I want to use these polylines, uh, but those polylines are basically uh, in clustered data and I want to put them into a simple list. So I'm going to right click and flatten this list so that we can get them uh, as a single row of data. And you can see that now I basically have created um, the, the first parametric model of the bench that I wanted to make. Now, one thing we can control about this one is if I change, for instance, the Z value of um, these points, the profile points, we can basically see that it's changing uniformly. And here I can also change the bottom half as well. So I can also control how this, um, this part is going to move. But what I want to do is make this different for each, um, each profile that we have. And to do that section, we're going to move on to the next phase. I don't need this XY plane anymore. And I'm going to replace these with some uh, graph mapper data. So I'm going to type in graph mapper. And what I want to do is first create a range. And the way graph mapper works is basically if we have 21 frames, we need to supply in 21 evaluations from zero to one. And let's place a simple, uh, linear graph mapper, you can see that these evaluations that go from zero to one would uh, give me an output here and we can use these as percentages. So if I change the graph, you can see that the parameters are changing as well. And for the bench model that I made, uh, I basically used a graph type uh, that is, um, uh, that is, um, it's, it wasn't a Perlin, it was a, uh, not a square root, let's see. Uh, it was a Gaussian model so that uh, we can have lower values at the ends and we can have higher values uh, for the top. And this is controlling the height of the rest for this parametric bench. And what I want to do now is let's say we use these as percentages and all I have to do is multiply the hundred, which would be the maximum height value for the rest, uh, for the backrest of the bench. So I get the graph mapper values feed into A and I use 100. So you can see that the values will be changing from zero to 70 to 25. So the middle values, if I move this around, they will basically shift uh, with the evaluations. And because I have uh, 21 planes, uh, basically each of them will get a different uh, Z evaluation for those two points. And all I have to do is replace this 100 with the graph data. So I'm going to get the V from here and the V from here. 
and you can see now that my Z evaluations have changed. And if I move this around, now I can control where the Z height of the bench is going to change. Uh, but you can see that the geometry is not as nice as we would like it to be. It's uh, because of the sweeping function that we have. So the sweep kind of locks the geometry to the profiles that we are generating. So rather than using a sweep, we can simply use a loft and I can simply feed in the profiles to the loft and I'm going to disable the sweep so that you can see we're actually getting a nice um, evaluation uh, for the for the parametric bench. Now this is a parametric model. So if I change the height of the of the um, of the bench, I can also change the variations here. So I can move this up a bit more and I can change its location and I can bake another model. So um, we can basically the advantage is since I built these relationships parametrically, I can basically output many different variations. So rather than modeling one variation, constructing a parametric workflow is always more advantageous. Um, I'm going to do the similar uh, thing, but this time to these minus points. So I'm going to make another copy of the graph mapper. But this time uh, we need a minus value. So um, I can basically multiply uh, this value with uh, minus 50. And let's feed this in. And you can see that um, it's actually moving from um, moving in an irregular fashion because this is going in the positive direction and while my data was going in the negative direction. So I basically need to reverse this data. So I'm going to subtract all the values from one. And what that will do is when the data here is zero, it will have basically 100 percentage. So all the points will to move to minus 50. So I'm going to subtract first all this data from one and then connect this here so that you can see um, we're basically moving here. And uh, I'm also getting some zero values here, which we don't want. So I want the minimum value to be set to, let's say, 0 0.2. So I can always uh, go back here and set uh, a maximum uh, threshold and put it to 0.2 or let's say 0.4. And if I use this, you can see that the values here would be set to um, 0 0.4. So that will control um, how the values are going to be interpolated. I can also use a different type of graph. For instance, you can also use um, a Bezier or a sign summation that would also do the job. So let's look at our loft again. So when I do the loft, you can see that I've created this uh, kind of chunk here. Uh, we can also um, try another type of graph. Let's say we use a Bezier. So I'm going to move from here. Let's say we move here and then I'm going to Can also make it something like this. This will also be nice. And if I bake it now, this is now the bench that I have. So it will be resting here, but it will be going up here. You can see that the shape of it is changing. And now that we have integrated some graph mappers, let's move on to the final phase of extracting the contours. And before I extract the contours, I'm actually going to uh, round the edges of the polyline. So you can do that by uh, fillet command. So I want to fillet the rough edges of the curve that we're using so that it will be rounded a bit. I'm going to use a threshold of 10. Uh, for this exercise, I also forgot to mention that I set my um, set my units to centimeters. So if um, this is basically a bench that is three, four feet uh, three four meters long and my sections are in centimeters so all these values that I use these are actually centimeters now the lofted geometry is a bit more smoother um, I actually have some irregularity here let's see how we can fix that um, I think it's uh, because of this so let's move this down move this around a bit
and maybe move this as well yeah this was the problem I think now it's uh, working so let's bake it so you can always play around with the uh, sliders that you have so to make sure that your model is working and that's the shape that I have for now and uh, what I'm going to do is first uh, make this uh, model um, into uh, into a contour shape. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to first get a bounding box of the lofted geometry. And then I'm going to deconstruct this uh, box so that we can look at the X, Y and Z directions. And I want to look at the Y direction first. So the Y direction goes from 71 to, 7, to 726. So I'm going to deconstruct the domain and use these values for uh, the X, Y, Z uh, for a point. And these are going to be the Y coordinates of two points. And I'm going to draw a simple line there. And we're going to use this line to cut sections of the parametric bench that we are modeling. So I'm going to turn the box off. For the line, I'm going to do perpendicular frames. And let's say we want to have 100 sections. So these are the sections that I want to have. I'm going to use a command uh, that is called, um, you can also go to intersect uh, mathematical boundary representation in plane. Now the boundary representation is going to be my lofted geometry and the planes are going to be the frames that we have. Now once you combine these two you can see that we have extracted the profiles and I'm going to turn off uh, everything that I had here, also turn off the points. And for the final phase we're going to just do boundary surfaces and I can simply do an extrusion. So if I do extrude, I want to extrude these in the Y direction. And let's say our material property is two centimeter thick plywood. So that's my bench. And if I right click and bake, Um, I also moved the curve, so let's move the curve back. And this is the bench model that I have. Now, there are some problems here which uh, I'm noticing, so that might occur with the, uh, with the graph, with the interpolation. So um, try to play around with your input geometry as well as with your graph inputs. And one thing I also want to mention is because we are cutting this geometry in the X direction, if you go to your plan, uh, if you select your curve, make sure that these end deviations are always uh, parallel to the Y axis. So for instance, if I move this point around, now these two points are not, um, are not uh, parallel to the x-axis, you can see that we are not extracting these profiles here, right? So I'm, I'm actually extracting some profiles, but they're always, um, they're always cut because, um, because the um, the loft geometry is always perpendicular to the curve. So if I turn on the lofted geometry, you can see that this is lofted geometry, but I'm cutting the sections uh, in the X direction. So when I cut that, you can see that these profiles are not closed so that um, we are not actually getting the right representation of the geometry. I can also uh, test this out on another profile. For instance, let's make it uh, like this. I made a new, um, new bench model. Let's say it's going to be on a spine like this. I'm going to select this and input this curve to the um, grasshopper model and the the bench will be basically created on that spine now and you can see this is this is the shape that we get and um, I'm actually going to go around and play with some of these parameters you can also change 
the number of uh, profiles that you have. So playing around with these graphs uh, do change things around a bit. So you can also change the number of frames that you have. You can also move um, the location of this bump for the backrest. Um, but the idea is that you can construct any type of profile parametrically, use graph mappers to control some of the input points for that, uh, for that profile, and then extract uh, horizontal sections of the, of the geometry. So I'm going to um, basically bake some variations. In this case, you can use different spines, different types of inputs. So this is my second variation. Right, so uh, basically we are controlling each segment of the bench, each segment of the bench, and uh, we are basically modeling it in terms of uh, contour geometry. So I assume that this is going to be built out of plywood material so that you can have some parametric control of the, uh, over the geometries. And you can use any type of uh, spine curves and uh, parametric profiles. Um, so for this exercise, um, you can uh, basically make some variations and try different spines and different types of thresholds. You can also control the number of uh, uh, perpendicular elements that you have uh, for your benches.